So we're we're ready to start here. Well, good morning. We're going to get started because it's nine o'clock or plus, according to my phone, my watch, and all of that kind of stuff. So, uh, welcome to those listening on uh, Facebook Live. We are connected to Wi-Fi here now at Mabel. So, if you've been witnessing and having some glitches in our morning worship services, hopefully those will no longer be an issue. Um, so, we're going to gather for worship on uh, Thursday, Christmas Eve at 4 o'clock. And next Sunday on the 27th, we will not be gathering because there will be just too many of us gone. So, uh, but you're welcome to come on Christmas Eve and bring some family if you want to, or however that works out. And I'm looking forward to that. I always look forward to Christmas Eve service. This is, this is the time of the year when we seem to have a lot of hope, more hope than we sometimes do. Uh, and we know that Christmas is the forerunner. The birth of Christ is the, is the forerunner of, of Easter, and that's another thing we celebrate. There are, there are a lot of churches that haven't met in person, you know, basically since COVID started. And uh, a seminary professor that I had when I was, you know, many, many years ago, um, does an article, he calls it, In the Meantime. And I enjoy reading what David Lowe has to say each week. Uh, but here was a separate uh, message from that this week that this group of churches, he's a pastor at a church in the Twin Cities now. He was a professor at Luther when I took some classes there many years ago when he was then president of another Lutheran seminary, but he's in the parish. But um, there's about 30 churches maybe were listed on this letter that in the Twin Cities were not be meeting for worship on Christmas Eve. So on classic public radio, which is nationwide, at 6 at at 6.30 our time, it was 4.30 Pacific, 5.30 Mountain, 6.30 here, 7.30 Eastern. Anyway, Classic Public Radio is going to be broadcasting um, a kind of a worship service on Christmas Eve. And at a certain time in that service, they're going to invite everybody to light a candle and join together and sing Silent Night. And I just thought, what a wonderful way for, I mean, there's all of these churches in the Twin Cities that just think about that. Minneapolis, St. Paul area, if all of the members of all these churches, or even half of them, do that. And it's going to be nationwide, so they're, they're going to have that, and it says at the point in time, this Steve is going to invite everybody around the country to join in the singing. And there's a, I just, I printed this out this morning because there's a little invocation, a little reading there, and then it encourages you to read John 1, 1 through 5, which is uh, John's way of introducing Jesus a little bit to the world, and then a prayer. And I just... I thought that was a, a wonderful way for a lot of churches to work together in order to bring worship to their people uh, when they don't gather together that way. So, I can't find my hymn right now. So, our opening hymn this morning is Angels We Have Heard on High, number 136 in the Hymns of Faith. Yeah. 
I remember being told one time as I was singing in the choir, you know when you know that Gloria, you don't have to look at the words in the book. <laughs> and, and I remember that and I think about some of those refrains in these songs and we sing them over and over, we know them, but we're so much more comfortable studying those words in that book, just like we, we might have a, you know, a brain freeze and, and forget what we're supposed to do. But, um, one of the things I really enjoy about Christmas is all of the carols. And I've been singing some to myself, and my voice can tell it this morning. I, it was just, I feel strained in my voice. Uh, our opening prayer is printed in the bulletin. I invite you to join with me, join our voices as we come to God in prayer. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We confess our faith with the words of the Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. first scripture reading this morning is from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 11 and 16. This is God's covenant with David. Now it came to pass when the king was dwelling in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all of his enemies all around, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, See, now I dwell in the house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in its inside tent curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David to build a... Uh, go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Would you build a house for me to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought the children of Israel up from Egypt, even to this day. But I have moved about in a tent and in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about with all the children of Israel, have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel, 
whom I commanded to shepherd my people, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, tell, says the Lord of hosts, tell my servant David, I, look, I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. And you have made a great name, like the name of the great men who are on the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them that they may dwell in the place of their own, and they will move no more. Nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them any more as previously, since the time that I commanded the judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused you to rest from all your enemies. Also the Lord tells you that he will make you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading is the very last verses of Romans. It's from chapter 16, verses 25 through 27. Paul writes, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, but now has made, been made known by the prophets, scripture made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God, for the obedience to faith, to God alone, wise, be, be through the glory of Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Here ends our second reading. And our gospel reading this morning is from Luke 1, beginning at verse 26. I invite you to stand as you're comfortable standing. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when Mary saw this angel, she was perplexed at his greeting and considered and pondered what matter of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High God will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. So in my Bible, right at Mary's statement, I have the word written, faith. And that is, you know, the ultimate faith that Mary showed. Trust in God that she would believe the word of the angel, that she would, that she would agree to be the servant of God. And every time I read this story, I mean, it starts out in the sixth month. And, I, you know, it's, I, I know what the sixth month was, is. It's the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy because... In Luke's gospel, he tells us right at the very beginning of the gospel that he's going to sit down and he's going to write an orderly account of us for the life and times of Jesus Christ. And he begins his story with the announcement to Zechariah and to Elizabeth, the birth of John the Baptist, this couple in their old age. And I just, I marvel at how when Zechariah was, was the high priest and he was behind the curtain, you know, the angel came and spoke to him, and he didn't believe, or he wondered about it, and couldn't speak until the baby was born. And everybody was debating, well, what will they name this child? And after the child was born, the first words the dad speaks is, his name will be John. A name which was not of that family at all. 
a name which surprised them. But anyway, so this sixth month that our lesson began with this morning is the sixth month of Mary's preg of, of Elizabeth's pregnancy. And it says in there also that the first five months of her pregnancy, Elizabeth hid. And I wonder, did Mary do the same? I mean, Mary went, when she found out that she was pregnant, then Mary went in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy to, to be with Elizabeth. Think about Mary, a young girl. They, they were... They were married anywhere from 12 to 20 years of age, you know, there. And it, you know, she, common people or common belief is that she was maybe 14 years old, 14, 16, whatever. In today's society, you know, if, if one of our daughters or one of the girls of our community becomes pregnant at that age, it's still kind of a scandal. It gets kind of talked about. And I'm sure that, I mean, there's, there's this little bit of, you know, wanting to stay out of the public eye. And this was what Elizabeth did, and I'm sure this was what Mary did as well. Because you think about, you know, she's not married, she's betrothed, engaged, they're living together, learning to know each other, and all of those things. But what will the others of the household say? But yet when this angel comes, and I think about that too, the angel comes to Mary, and the angel's words, the first words aren't, fear not. The angel's first words are, Rejoice, O highly favored one, for God is with you. And it is those words that Mary is perplexed by. It's those words that Mary begins to ponder and to wonder about and to think about. And then the next thing the angel does says, you know, don't fear. You know, don't worry about it. And things are going to be okay. But when I, when I read this story, I always think about the Holden Evening Service. And it's a service that we a lot of times do during Lent. And... A few weeks ago, I saw that this was on the organ back here. And so uh, I'm going to sing the Mary a little bit here to you again. This, I just, I love the Annunciation from Holden Evening Service. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. And then it goes right into the Magnificat, which I'm not going to sing today, where she sings, you know, it's just, it's beautiful music, beautifully done. And there's so much of our music that way that comes right out of our scriptures. And for, for, for him to write that and put that to music is just, I mean, I should have been able to sing that without looking at the words, but it's been a long time since we've done the whole an evening service. But when I thought about it this week, that was one of the songs that's been going through my mind. Mary's reaction to this angel, let it be with me as God has decreed. You know, she's not worried about the shame. She's not worried at that time, what's Joseph going to say? What are others going to say? She's willing to do what God asks her to do. <clears throat> If I was to look at each of you and say, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. If I said your name and said that, would you believe it? Would you feel differently? Because that is God's word to us, just as it was to Mary through this angel. Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. This year has been such a catastrophe in so many ways. And people are... I mean, a lot of times people say, well, where is God when this happened? And there are people wondering in this COVID world we're living in today, where is God and why isn't God doing more? And, and why is this and why is this and why is this and where is God? But God is with us. Just as he was with Mary, just as he came, he doesn't maybe speak to us every, every day through the voice of an angel, but he speaks to us through his word. 
And it's one of the reasons that I enjoy a daily devotion, spending a little bit of time in God, thinking about God's word and thinking about God coming to us, speaking to us. And it's one of the reasons that I get so happy about Christmas, why I feel so much joy at Christmas time. That even though the world is in chaos, even though you know, we weren't sure, I mean, at Thanksgiving, we didn't really gather together as we would like to have. There have been so many times in the year we haven't been able to gather together. And there are families that won't be gathering together. And there are churches, as I mentioned earlier, that won't be gathering together to get together and sing praises to God on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day to welcome the birth of the Christ child, as we are so used to doing candlelight service on Christmas Eve when we would get to the point in the service where the lights would go down and we would light the candles and we would sing together Silent Night was always is one of the most powerful times of the year for me but this lesson that we just read this morning that we just heard is another one of those really powerful times in the life of the church for me because we see this young girl who is a nobody. Seriously, she's a nobody. Having an angel come, and she is going to bear the son of the Most High God. And she's perplexed. She wonders, well, why would God choose me? You know? Have you ever wondered why God chose you for something? Or why it felt to you that this was what you needed to do? That, that God was pushing you in this direction? Or that, you know, you thought, you know, I really should call so-and-so today. I, I really think that that's something that God puts on our hearts and on our minds. But sometimes we don't act on those things. And so, but Mary was wondering, why is God choosing me? I mean, I, I really have no qualifications to do this. And I would guess that probably 80% of the pastors, probably 100% of Sunday school teachers feel that same way. You know, that for whatever reason, they've been called to do whatever it is. I remember one time years ago when Cheryl and I were in the living room and Pastor Holty's car pulls in the driveway and I said, well, Pastor's coming, what's he coming for? And Cheryl said, ah, he wants us to do something. <laughs> you know, and she was right because, you know, he came out, he came driving out, he, he, said, you know, he said to us, we didn't have any kids yet then. This was, you know, early 80s. And he said, you know, I think you guys would be great Luther League advisors. And I said, ah, you know. But uh, so we don't always have an angel come speak to us. You know, sometimes it's a pastor. Sometimes it's a friend. Somebody, sometimes it's somebody that serves on the board of Ed. Or sometimes it's just, you know, another member of the church that comes and says to you or to me, you know, I think that this would be something that you could do. Or would you be willing to consider this? The angel came to Mary. Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. He is going to come upon you, and you will bear the child who will become the Savior of the world. I don't know. I mean, there's no way I'll ever have a baby, thankfully. But, I mean, if how would you feel? I mean, you'd be terrified. You'd be in awe. You'd be wondering. You know, you, you'd be so full of emotion. With, with all of this going on, that God would choose you for such an honor to think about and to wonder about. And then I think about Mary as she lived and she watched her son grow up and she knew, she knew from this angel's visit that her son was to be the savior of the world, that he was the son of God, the promised Messiah. And as we read the gospels, you know, especially, uh, Especially when Mary is you know, trying to get Jesus to, to do things. And he'll say, my time is not yet. My time is not yet. My time is not yet. And then in John, we come to the feast of the wedding at Cana. And Mary just finally is tired of hearing, my time is not yet. And she just says, do whatever he tells you. You know, she says, it, it, you know, she's been perplexed and pondering and wondering for roughly 30 years. Because Jesus was roughly 30 years old when he began his ministry. But she's been wondering all that time about the angel's words, about how is this son of mine going to be the savior of the world? So I think about Mary and the, her anxiety, her 
wondering when the angel comes and talks to her, not only about the baby that she would have, but when he says, for God is with you. Because sometimes, as I said, we don't feel the presence of God. We wonder, where is God? But as she watched her child grow, she wondered and she pondered for 30 years. We've been watching for the return of Christ for over 2,000 years. And the last couple Sundays we had texts that made us think more about the return of the Lord. And as I'm reading through Revelation, it's a lot about the end of time when God comes again. Not the end of time as we know it on this earth, when God will again come into the world. So we wait and we wonder and we're ready and we say yes to God. And we say, sometimes we say to God, you know, why don't you hurry up a little bit with things? But God works in his own time and in his own way. And so like Mary, God asks each one of us to say, let it be so with me. Let me be your servant in your time, in your time, God, not in mine in your time. Last week I remember talking about being enough in relationship to John the Baptist. That he knew that he was enough. He didn't need to be the Savior. He didn't want to be the Savior. He said, I am not the Savior. I am not the prophet. I am not Elijah. I am John. I am the one a voice crying out in the wilderness and that's enough. Because that was what God had called him to be. God called Mary to be the mother of the Savior of the world. God calls you and me to be witnesses. God calls, God's called us, everybody that's here, to be a mom or a dad, to be a grandpa, a grandma, a great grandpa and great grandma. You know, and, and we have that responsibility of raising our ki children. Uh, and that is an awesome call, I think, from God to have a child and to raise that child up and to teach that child the stories of faith and to instill in that child the, the songs that we sing at Christmas, the joy that comes and the wonder that comes. I made some signs that say, they're in the form of a stop sign. They say, Santa, stop here. And, you know, the kids, the kids especially, I like Santa Claus to come too. But the kids are excited about Santa. And when they're really young, that's what Christmas is all about. The gifts and Santa Claus. And as they grow a little older, they come to realize that it's about family, it's about God, it's about Jesus, the greatest gift that ever came. Jesus is the greatest gift we've ever received. And the forgiveness and salvation, the promise of salvation that comes in and through him. So when I think about Mary, this young, <coughs> unwed girl, who has a visit from an angel, who is told by the angel that God is with you. And she says, let it be so with me, as God would have. It's just good advice for us to let God be God, to let our lives become what they are, and to trust in God that in the end, everything will be good. That's the promise of Jesus, that in the end, everything will be right and we'll have our place with God. It's the promise that comes through Christmas and is fulfilled at Easter time in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Gracious God, it's often, maybe I shouldn't say often, but sometimes difficult to hear your voice in the world. Sometimes we, we may hear it, we may feel a nudge to do something, but we're so overwhelmed with everything we're doing, we're so focused on where we're doing and what we're doing and where we're going, that, that our ears are closed, that our hearts aren't open to your word and to your will. And we sometimes forget that you are with us and that we are highly favored, just like Mary, just like each and every one that you have ever created. We are all the same in your eyes, God. It doesn't make any difference if we're children, if we're, you know, 95 or 106, it doesn't matter what we do for a living, whether we're male or female, you love us all equally and unconditionally.
And that love comes down at Christmas time. Help us not only to know Christmas and the joy of Christmas here now in late December, but help us to live Christmas every day of the year. Continue to bless us with your love and encourage us as we grow in faith. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our offering plate and our communion tray are in the entryway of the church. Uh, if you didn't pick up a, a glass for communion, I encourage you to go back and do that in a little bit. But right now we'll sing our offertory response, We Give Thee But Thine Own. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be, all that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. And then now we go back to a Christmas song, yeah, the train whistle came right in on time with that, oh man, that's just, I mean, one of those things that often I don't hear or notice, but it, today we did. Uh, so we sing today now uh, hymn number 125, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. I'm going to go start over with this song. Continue to play Angels from the Realms of Glory. I think, I mean, I don't know. It didn't sound like the right song to me. So we are going to sing, I'll, we'll sing a cappella. Here we go. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With the angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Pleased as men with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to 
the newborn King. Hail the heavenborn Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lay his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. liturgy is printed in our bulletins. Come, all who are loved by God, come to his table. We come to eat, to drink, and our hearts are glad. We remember the way that Jesus showed us his love. On the evening before he died, he had supper with his friends. During the meal, he took the loaf of bread, he gave thanks for it. He broke it, and he passed it around with these words. This is my body broken for you. Eat this and remember me. And after the meal, he took the cup of wine and he gave thanks for it and he passed it around with these words. This is my blood shed for you. Drink this and remember me. So if you have taken your wafer out of your, out of your communion set, this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the blood of Christ shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it in remembrance of Jesus. Your sins are entirely and completely forgiven in the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us bow our heads again in a word of prayer. Gracious and eternal God. That word eternal God is one that we sometimes don't really think about. That you are eternal. We don't always remember that you are with us. But the words of the angel to Mary remind us that you are with us. Each and every day. Each and every moment. All of the time even when we are not aware of your presence. Help us to rejoice and to be glad that you love us enough to have come and to visit this young woman and to have sent your son Jesus into this world. Help us to remember him always. We pray for our United States, the nation that we live in, the land that we love, the, land, the home of the free and the brave. We pray for the leaders of our country that they may rule fairly, that they will work for the best benefit of all of the people of the United States, and that we will be a nation united under you, our Lord God. Pray for all who work so diligently in the service industry. You know, sometimes we, we forget about, you know, the clerks in the stores, the, the people that work in the fast food places and the restaurants, and people that, you know, care for us in so many ways that we're not aware of. But they are just as important in your sight, and they are sometimes more essential than, than others that we consider so essential. Remind us that every person is essential in your sight, and every person is worthy in your sight. Bless our medical professionals, you know, from the researchers and doctors and nurses and CNAs to the custodians to the cooks to all who work in that healthcare field to provide healing and wholeness to us when we, when we need that healing. Remember, help us to remember that, that they are, they're giving of themselves for us and for our benefits. Pray for those who are struck with this disease COVID right now, for those who are quarantining, um, just continue to give us strength and, and help us to be aware of our surroundings, of our circumstances that way. It's easy to 
go on about our lives sometimes. We're a little bit separated from the world, but, but we're not. We are a part of the world. And everything that impacts the world impacts us. So just remind us to be watching out for others and, and to be aware of our surroundings and our circumstances. I pray, Lord, for those who are undergoing treatments for cancer right now, I think especially of Mandy. Um, just help those cells that, that, she, that she received, help those cells to fight the cancer within her body. For her family, for her husband and daughters who now have COVID, to keep them safe, promote healing within them as well, so that when Mandy comes home, they can have a joyous reunion. I'm joyful for new birth and for the grandson, Lord to Randy and Lori, and just pray for his well-being and, and just know that he is a blessing from you. So thank you for the blessings that we have. All of these things, Lord God, and anything else that you see that would be beneficial for us, grant us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On this day and always, may the Lord bless you and strengthen you, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. So we try the keyboard again, and we'll try to, we're going to sing Away in the Manger, and hopefully we'll have... It'll start in the right spot, in the hymn number 131. sometimes in some of our songs. I've never seen that second verse end with stay by my cradle to watch lullaby. I mean, that was, those, those words snuck up on me in there. But, you know, to watch while I sleep, while I play, and while, I, you know, while I'm not aware of what's going on, you know, while I'm at my most vulnerable. And that's one of the things God is with us at all times. So go in peace, serve the Lord. We will. Thanks be to God. 